Allo bimin sama zamdi tashi tere namaste julle lamba. En sama diho ingire. A drink ja gal shin rusana dhane ganzo interview sta. Rol of the singing interview pam masi ya bojina A N I la na sha the podcast ina the YouTube la bodana mongosh to desha. And the interview with thanda bordo ngi da interview ganzo pawa mi din ke interview pam mongo thonyo ra thanda bordo best interview din da thanda bordo di thong sura. Deepul interview kar kar ke mongosh le sura na. तब फिर हमसे खंडे शोर बा एंड क्या मुझे मुझे खंडे कैप्चर जो बा उनसे शुंग द खंडे से ये इन्हें गोट्सू में बा चिंजे शुंग खंडे गोट्सू में बा दिगर ना शे जंबुलिंग मिकी एंड छब्बीस खरगट ठाप है गिकाब डाम में ना छब्बीस खरगट ठाप ठाप शा एंड पेपर कैप्चर नांगे उन्हें कैप्पेपर कैप्चर � Mangkuk itu pun, ini sembuh kau cuma dengan mangkuk itu cuma tanpa pada orang tu kumanyung tu, capture pool ke ni lor, tanpa orang tu cuma dengan kumanyung tu ke, cuma dengan pemis mangkuk itu lor, kumah tu ni orang tu kekuk ham mangkuk itu ni, di di intro pun mangkuk itu orang tu share lindu itu lor, di itu dengan intro di kang di share cikgu sama lor, ini ngacung di intro di inci buris lor, itu kalau pegi apa, tanpa inci masing itu orang ni kita, pegi cikgu cikgu sini lor, pegi ni pegi bol dok dok sini. Doktor sih, dia sih cuci cuci, jagi jagi doa sama si paru paru mende. Di luar sama segera je, ini inji mende di channel subscribe segera je lemba. Ini cik di luar sana pernah aku pen tu dulu lemba. So motivation pernah aku raih tu. Di luar ok dah, entah mau intro with the intro with the inji mende kerana share channel je kerana cukup cukup di luar share channel. Ini di sama paham mah di luar share channel. Entah mende di luar share channel kerana paham mah. Inji masing di luar pes memang sih di entah mende ni ada skill dan umur sama di dulu lemba. Namaste Jai Hind, you are watching or listening to the ANI podcast with Smita Prakash. Today the topic for discussion is Tibet and China. To explain this to us, we have in our studio former Prime Minister of Tibet in exile, Lobseng Sangye. Lobseng Sangye is the first non-monk person in exile from Tibet to have held that post. His father was a monk who fled Tibet in 1959, the same year as the Dalai Lama. Sangye was born in a refugee camp in India. But more about him in this conversation. Mr. Sangye, thank you so much for being part of the podcast. I want to talk a lot about uh, China, Tibet and the Indian situation in this historically and contemporary. But before that, I want to show a short primer for uh, people who don't understand this complex situation a little bit. Uh, I'm sure people of, uh, who have a background in international relations know a lot about this, have read it, have probably experienced the situation, those who came in, those who are refugees uh, and are watching this podcast. Um, especially those who live uh, in America like uh, you do. Uh, but still, I think uh, for the layman, it is little important to understand the complex situation because it really is complex because there's so much of historical context uh, to this, uh, to the current situation. So here's a short primer for those who don't know much about uh, Tibet. Tibet came under the control of PRC or the People's Republic of China in 1951 and despite several minor attempts at uprising, the Chinese military completely controlled Tibet. There is a Tibetan government in exile based in Dharamsala in Himachal Pradesh, India, which came into being in 2011. In 1963, the 14th Dalai Lama, who was in exile in India, promulgated the constitution of Tibet and he became the permanent head of state of Tibet. In 1974, he rejected calls for Tibetan independence and he became the permanent head of the Tibetan administration and the executive functions for Tibetans in exile in 1991. In 2005, he accepted that Tibet is a part of China and Tibetan culture and Buddhism are part of Chinese culture. In 2011, by the time he was 71 years of age, the Dalai Lama decided not to assume any political and administrative authority. The Charter of Tibetans in Exile was updated and in 2017, the Dalai Lama restated that Tibet does not seek independence from China but seeks development. Mr. Sanghi, um we will get into the situation of Tibet and uh, the Dalai Lama's position regarding this. But first, let's begin with your story because I need to explain to my viewers why I am asking you to explain the entire Tibetan situation. When did you come to India uh, as a refugee? When did your father come here? Um, 
we need to speak a little bit about that before uh, we get into the entire Tibetan situation. Thank you. Good to be on your show. I watch your show. It's very popular. So, Simita Ji, thanks for, you know, uh, hosting me here. Um, yes, uh, we always say, you know, India has been the best host that Tibetans could have. Because I'm writing a book on how to set up and run democratic government exile. Mm -hmm. And whenever exile community come, host country is very, very important. It determines your mm -hmm. outcome as well. We can discuss that later. Um, and then, uh, you know, my parents mm -hmm. um, fled Tibet in 1959 with his holiness the Lama. And they settled in a place called Lama Hatta in Darjeeling, a small place called in a village called Lama Hatta Basti. So uh, that's where I grew up. How many uh, days did it take for your parents to walk from wherever they were into Darjeeling? <laughs> Now then, two two separate uh, you know families, so two mm. separate stories. Oh, they were not married. No, no inside Tibet, no. Oh. They met out. They met Later. in Darjeeling. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So my father was a monk, mm. um, in a place called Lithang, Lithang Monastery. So Lithang Monastery happens to be the first monastery to be bombarded, oh. and destroyed, uh, in 1957 on. Then many of the monks had to flee. So and then they went to Lhasa mm. and they formed this guerrilla mm. group called Four Rivers, Six Rangers, Yushi Gandruk. And from my father's side, except for him, all the siblings were left behind. Oh. Yeah. Um, and then he joined this guerrilla force, which escorted and provided security for his solid escape mm. from you know, Tibet all the way to India. Mm. So my father was, you know, he was also what they call... Um, Corporal master who was in charge of arms, ammunition, and food supplies, things like that. This is when there was an armed insurrection. An it insurrection. was not a peaceful moment, at a peaceful struggle in those years. Not at all. It yeah. was to defend our, you know, fatherland, sure. and defend our monastery, defend mm. our faith. Mm. They were, in fact, the other name for this group was Defender of Faith. Mm. Because the first thing the Communist Party, you know, uh, of China, especially People's Liberation Army, did was destroy our monasteries. Yeah. So they say, oh, they are the destroyer of our faith mm. and we must defend mm. our faith. Hence, many monks joined the guerrilla group. And your father's name? My father's name is Kesang Chodak. Uh -huh. yeah, he passed away uh, in 2004. And uh, so, um, because he was corporate master, you know, he was you know, all over the places to supply arms, mm. ammunition, things mm. like that. So, uh, you were telling me about uh, your dad yes. uh, and he was a corporal master and mm. uh, he was part of the uh, the military, should I say uprising or defending or whatever that they did, but it got crushed and then they ran from there, right? Yes, because you know, when Tibet was an independent country, mm. we barely had two, three thousand military personnel. Standing army. Mm. And and then maybe additional two, three thousand militia, that's all we had. Mm. And then the guerrillas, right, the Tibetans, you know, yeah. uh, like our father and so many volunteered. At most, it crossed, you know, 10, 20,000, maybe, mm. you know. And then the Chinese brought like around 100,000 yeah. uh, veterans of Korean War, mm. you know. So one lakh against 20, 30,000, there's no competition, right? Yeah. So, I mean, yes, um, but they, they fought very bravely and they mm. defeated some of the, you know, mm. Uh, Chinese platoons, you know, um, so they fought very bravely. But then what they managed to do was secure his solid escape mm. from, you know, Tibet to India, mm. along with his solid personal bodyguards and, you know, Tibetan military as well. Yeah. Uh, so that was his uh, contribution. Mm. Um, but then even though I said he was, you know, he was a monk, he was also doing part business. Mm. That gets a little complicated. So he had traveled to India before. Okay. In, uh, in but he came with Dalai Lama. He, he came, yes. So I, I have to interrupt you here. I took a picture of you uh, with that uh, photograph in our lobby. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I have a little story to tell before we sure. go forward. So uh, the chairman of ANI mm -hmm. was covering the Dalai Lama coming in at that stage. Oh. Yes. In So those pictures, that picture which you saw, so he was covering and there were like three, four other photographers. Yes. 
so they were told that this is where the dalai lama mm-hmm, will be mm-hmm. coming in yeah. uh, so he was working for mm-hmm. something called the viz news which is which then got bought over by today's reuters mm. so when when he was uh, taking the picture he took the picture of the dalai lama walking mm. in with some other monks mm-hmm. and along with that the ap photographer mm. associated press he took the picture too mm. now the associated uh, press fed the picture immediately oh our pictures went in about you know feeding a picture was also a complicated task yes. if you recall at that time you had to mm-hmm. reach a mm-hmm. post office and you had to so the picture was fed now ap got the photograph first mm. um right in london so they got the picture and uh, they just looked at the picture and said what have you fed the dalai lama doesn't have a beard what oh. you have said mm. sent is a picture of a monk who has a beard he this is not the dalai lama ah they got the wrong picture they got the wrong picture oh. so the ap photog you see you're mm. talking about an age where not much was available on the dalai That's lama true. right yeah. so mm. it was hard to figure out which one is the dalai lama because mm-hmm. there so many monks yes who were coming in so many in the sense yes. over a dozen of them and they were all in the same attire aha uh-huh. so even though uh air, the well the parent of ani organization mm-hmm. had the picture he had the correct picture mm. he was a couple of minutes late but because the ap photographer got the wrong picture yeah. we broke the story oh <laughs> so, so it's a long story long so we story. we have seen that picture over and over again correct. so of that so that is an ani picture or rather it's a now a reuters picture which was originally a viz news picture mm. shot by the chairman of ani <laughs> my goodness yeah that's the history oh so and i can take full credit <laughs> and um, yes uh, but the, i'm just saying in congratulations <laughs> to the chairman who yes. you know got the photograph of the decade at that time yeah so at that time it was like there were so many coming in and nobody knew for certain but every what he just tells us is that it was a historic moment mm. uh when it was happening because nobody knew how this is going to go forward yes because you see it was like china might take an aggressive posture mm-hmm, mm-hmm. now that the dalai lama has come in and that anxiety continued for years together yeah even the escape from that, there yes it, it's it was called the great escape right yeah. the, it was featured on the front page of the time magazine yeah it took for his soreness around 14 days to cross from hasa all the way to the border of arunachal pradesh mm. so that's where me and my younger brother we are going to thawang and to the border to retrack the mm. steps in the movement of you know his soreness dalai lama and our late father how they came to india now you know that was a very painful story because his soreness mm. was 23 years old mm. when finally he decided to flee because you know yeah. chinese were bombing and killing hundreds and thousands of people in eastern part of tibet that's amdo and kham area you know where mm. my father's birthplace and another province where his soreness dalai lama was born so it's very painful mm. so his soreness is uh, um, you know he personally told me it's also written in his autobiography on the final day he you know uh, goes round his room three times uh praying that i will come back mm. to his residence mm. and then you know he disguises himself um as a lay person uh, and then escapes through because there are thousands of people protesting and guarding him telling him you know you, you should not go to the chinese camp mm. chinese military camp was inviting to him for sure mm. and then he disguises himself rides on a horse and you know uh, um goes through uh the where thousands of tibetans war and then escapes through and then i'm cutting sh- the sh- mm. story short but then finally when he climbs a hill the person who was you know uh, taking the horse of his soreness tells his soreness that this is the last spot from where you can see lhasa the capital city of tibet you know and your residence and he gets off the horse and looks at his residence and the lhasa capital city and then prays that he come back and then you know um then he will be met by uh, two of the shishugandug uh, gorillas who were there to escort him hmm. and immediately he asks them this what are your names one said temba tharke in tibetan means um the dharma will spread and uh and what about other others kunga something kunga means you know treasure mm-hmm. uh and then you say wow so you know 
it's good that two people are meeting. Of course, he is escorted by his own entourage, but now two gorillas are coming there. One is the dharma will spread. That's a good sign. And then Temba Tiger, so we won't be, you know, bad as far as money is also concerned. Mm. And then, you know, he rides the horse and treks over 13 days. And in between, you know, he has, it, it is a very difficult jo- journey, right? Mm. Riding on a horse. Mm. And then at one time, it was so difficult that he had to uh, get zo, which is a, a mixture of yak and a cow, mm. because they walk very smoothly mm-hmm. up up the hill down. So, and then his solemnness, as he comes to the border, you know, and then, you know, he told me, he felt kind of some sense of relief. This is border between Tibet I, and India. India at that time. Yeah. So, on the one hand, right, I mean, you know, you are a t- leader of Tibet and then you're escaping. And then, you know, it, 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 few times, actually, Chinese uh, fighter planes, you know, uh, circulate around, you know. By this time, has the word got around that he's no longer in Lhasa? Um, yes. Uh, after a few days, he's um, because, uh, you know, uh, he left uh, on uh, the midnight of March 17th. And he reaches Bumla, huh. uh, Tawang area, on March 31st. Tawang in India, Arunachal. Tawang in okay. Arunachal. Yeah, ju- yeah. This is just, I'm just locating the places because there are some expat viewers mm. who may not know the geography yes, of this yes. area. So, th- I'm just explaining. That's yeah. true. Mm. So, um, and then he says, you know, as he sees uh, the Indian, you know, and they were not prepared also. Because okay. another in- interesting part is that his solemnness was you know, escorted by Two CIA trained um, guerrillas, guerrillas who were equipped in sending messages. It's more like telegraph, but you know, not yes. ad- advanced. All the way to Washington D.C. Again, a little explainer for viewers who don't know that right from uh, the right from the time of British India days, uh, Tibetans were trained in guerrilla warfare, uh, and then even by Americans in the 1950s, uh, they were trained. Uh, Tibetans were trained in guerrilla warfare in Nepal area, and then of course they were there in Tibet after that. Yeah, sorry. Yes, in Nepal area, and the, that's later. That but came they were the, trained. Yeah, yeah they were Tibet. trained in 1956. On they were trained in Camp Hell in Colorado. Okay. Okinawa Island. Yeah, Japan again. And yeah. Yes. Um, so, and they were parachuted uh, to Tibet. And these people used to inform. So, so Great Scape, everybody, you know, like was wondering, where is the Lama? You know, the r- rumor is that he's no more. Uh, because then the Chinese started bombarding even his residence. Mm. So, fortunately, he escaped. Um, and then the President Eisenhower, being from a military background, who had participated in World War, especially in Pacific, you know, uh, region. So he was very interested. So every morning, he used to say, where is Dalai Lama today? So he had this map hmm. and he used to put a pin, right? So uh, I think uh, four or five days prior, hmm. Eisenhower called uh, Prime Minister Nehru and said, His Holiness Dalai Lama is coming to India. Hmm. Because there were also, you know, speculation whether he will go to Burma, which yeah. happens to a Buddhist country, or even Bhutan, you yeah. know, or Sikkim, or Thailand, you know. Uh, but then His Holiness did divination and you know, they all decided to come to India, in the land, or holy land of India, right, for us, is very special. Uh, and then, you know, uh, then India sent the welcoming group, and then that's the photograph. So this welcoming group which was sent, which I have heard, which uh, Mr. Prakash tells us, is that they they kept moving them from different areas Mm -hmm. so that nobody knows exactly from where he's coming. And even after coming, he was first acclimatized and kept in a tent. I don't know whether that is what your father told you, Mm -hmm. uh, but I believe this was, there was a lot of surreptitious activity which was done because uh, there was security involved. So the Indian journalists, Mm -hmm. rather journalists uh, you know who had arrived which included some Indians some Americans who were shooting were moved uh, yes. again and again so that nobody really knows what they are shooting when the Dalai Lama will mm-hmm. come how many will be with the Dalai Lama mm-hmm. if at all he will come yeah. today tomorrow day after so there was a lot of that movement which was happening I'm sure it's all very likely 
because yeah. you know the communication is yes. not as you know fast and Correct. you know efficient as now, and we have to do all this under you know secrecy because yeah. you you also didn't know the movement of Chinese troops. Chinese, yes. Um, and the guerrillas, many of the Tibetan guerrillas who came to who escorted him, many of them returned back to fight. Um, so uh, you know, so the Isolans crossed over, and he says he felt relieved. You know, hmm. then he was just like. To see, and there were like few menons and others, familiar faces, right? Mm. He said, "Oh, I'm safe now," you know. Mm. And then he came to India, and then the famous photograph by the yeah. chairman of ANI, yeah. and he gives his press conference at uh, Tejpur, mm. uh, and then you know comes down to Mali. Okay, the interview with the chairman with the in the interview with him with the girl that some more rage, tick to tick, tick tick, she need energy, does she get into that? She's a some new some good girl, right? ดีนวันสุดสุดโดดโดดโกยอรอกเออกูดิชาดีดิชาเนาะแล้วทางวดีเกจาฮาร์ลิงตุลันนาวันสุเพเออเพเกเพรังซีซังมาดีเพคันเ
Thank you very much.